Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show eight. In our last episode, we chatted on how to get your spouse on board. Today, it's all about why we encourage work-life integration, not balance. Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, where we bring you real-life strategies on starting and growing a business and finding financial freedom without sacrificing the life you have with your loved ones. We are your hosts, Tom and Ariana Sylvester, and we are married, we're parents, and we're serial entrepreneurs. This podcast is for those who want more out of life. We'll show you how to take the vision you have and create the business that will help you achieve it. Join us as we share practical steps, real life stories, and help you become a lifestyle builder. All right, so welcome back to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast. I'm your host, Ariana, and I got my co-host over here, this Tom guy. And today we're talking about kind of an important topic, um, something that's near and dear to our heart, um, and that's work-life integration. Not balance. Not balance. And the <laughs> reason I and the reason we say that is, it's really hard to think of things as being in balance when your life is basically chaos. <laughs> well, in in balance, I think gives us a wrong perception for people. Yeah. You know, you think of balance as you think of a scale and that's me. You gotta Everything's take gotta be equal. Yeah, you gotta take one thing away from something else and you know, people look at taking their life away um when they're trying to build their business and it doesn't have to be that way. So that yeah. gives you the wrong paradigm to start. Yeah. And I mean let's look at let, let's look at us for an example. When we opened our wine and liquor store, our daughter was eight months old, nine yeah, months say, old. Yeah, less than a year. Um so yeah, it was Taking her, I used to take her to the store with me. Um, <laughs> super awkward when you walk into a liquor store, there's a baby, but I didn't have a choice because we didn't have full time uh, employees all set up yet. We had one and we were working on getting the rest. So I was working at the store um, and I would be either rocking her in my lap in the chair. I wore a baby Bjorn so I could carry her around with me. There was a pack and play awkwardly say, in the yeah, corner. Yeah, we had her like at some point she was taking a nap in the corner and people were coming in. To, <laughs> I had to turn the doorbell ringer off so people wouldn't wake her up when they opened the door. <laughs> I know you're buying your alcohol, but shh, there's a sleeping baby in the corner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even just as they grow, you know, you get used to holding a baby in one hand while you're trying to put peanut butter and jelly on a sandwich with the other hand. I somehow was able to do that. And then daddy makes it wrong even when he's got two hands. So I don't know what's <laughs> up with that. <laughs> yes. But over the years, it's definitely been so much easier for us as parents if we integrate everything in our lives together in one nice, uh, it's like a harmony. Everything's in harmony because we're doing it as it fits for us, as fits best. Yeah. Well, and, and I'll tell you guys, if you don't have kids yet, like I'd highly recommend trying to start your business and getting some of that established before you have kids. Yeah. Now that's not to say that you should change your life plan or any of that, but I mean, we, we did an episode on the serial startups podcast yeah. all about how our businesses changed when we had kids Yes. and it changed Two differently different when we had our first child and then it changed drastically when we had our second child. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think to your point, the key is you want to look at your whole life Right. And you want to look at how all those pieces fit in and support each other instead of just saying like, OK, work life balance. I'm going to work more so that way my life isn't going to be as great. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that's what a lot of people feel like. And it doesn't have to be that way. It, it doesn't have to be. But when you think about balance, that's naturally where most people's well, heads and go. Let's talk about where that came from. There is a history behind the saying work life balance. It's when you actually are an employee, when you go to work. They talk about having a good work-life balance so you're not spending all of your time at work and you're still enjoying your time at life. You're balancing the two out. Yeah. But that's that's really only looking at it from two sides when that's not life. Life is definitely more complex than just a two-sided balance. Yeah, well, and I mean, you know, most people come from, like most people don't just start out as entrepreneurs. Correct. Um, most people have probably gone through college have gotten a job and then at some point just like me realized that they wanted yeah. more and so a lot of us come from that employee mindset and when you are an employee you're limited on how much control you have right so your employer says all right you're going to be here at eight 
Um, I know you should end at five, but you're going to have to stay late some days and get your projects done. So maybe it's six or whatever time. And it truly is a lot more of trying to do work-life balance yeah. because they're dictating. We basically have you from this time of day and we're paying you. So you're going to work for us. And then you mold your life around your work, your work. Yeah. But the freedom of entrepreneurs, and that's why a lot of people do this, is so that you don't have to necessarily you do it that around way. your life. Exactly, and that's that's a big thing that like we focus on, and that's what you that's part of what you get is entrepreneurship. There's a lot of other challenges, like you know, you are your own boss. Yeah. you've got to make sure you make the income, all Roller of that. Roller coaster of emotions. But with that, you actually get that opportunity to say what's important to me in my life. And I'm going to do those things first. Yep. And then I'm going to fill in and make sure everything else I do supports those goals. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why we talk about building a business to support the life because that's the end goal is the fulfilling life, the happy life with your spouse or if you have kids with your kids, your whole family, if you've got other people you want to surround you in a loving circle of family and friends, you get to you get to put that picture together and you get to strive towards that what, by building your business. Well, and, and that's the whole reason that we always talk about like plan with purpose and we like people come to us for business help and we send them to that course <laughs> first. Pause. Because what happens is if people just try to start building a business, but they don't know what they want their life to look like, they end up getting into this thing where it's like, well, I got to hustle all the time or, you know, I've. Maybe I've had success with the business, but in the meantime, my life's deteriorated or I'm not happy. Yeah. So it's all about really understanding, like starting out, what do you want your life to look like? What does that ideal life look like for you? Yep. And then the integration comes to say, okay, now how do you build the business that will then support that life? Yeah. And we've talked to a number of people who have gone down the path of this is a viable business idea. It's going to be successful. It's going to allow me the life I want. And then halfway down they look at it and realize that it's actually going to require more than they're willing to put in. It's going to take them away from their family. So even though it is a good business idea and they could make an income from it, they have that decision to make that choice to make and say, Hey, this isn't why I was doing it in the first place. So even though I could go and make tons of money from this, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause, turn on the brakes and turn around and go back the other way because ultimately it's not going to get me more time with my family. It's going to take me away from them more. Yeah. Well, and I think that's a struggle with a lot of people within like the startup community. Um, when you get those, those business ideas that could make it big, it's tough because you have to make that choice of, do I take that time away from my family now in order to create something hugely successful? Or do I kind of hold off and say, that would be something really cool, but I don't want to sacrifice the time with my family now in order to build that. Yeah. And I mean, there, there's always the questions. And one of the things I always tell people is, you know, ask yourself how, okay, so if you have that idea, how could you make it a reality? You know, that might be relying on other people or mm -hmm. hiring a team um, that might be bringing a partner in yep. and sharing some of that. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, and one of the other things too, I think, as we get into this is it's not always about like, um, having to take it away or the amount of time, like a big focus, like the, the I've especially realized is it's the quality yes. of time. You know, there's a lot of people we find they're like, oh yeah, I have a, a whole bunch of time with my family, but they're, they're not really utilizing it right They're Maybe they're watching TV while their kids are doing something. And not that that's a bad thing, but as you build a business, it's going to take some sacrifice. Yep. But with that sacrifice, you can be intentional with what do you do with your time with your family and, and what does that build in and look like? And then also, what are you doing with your business and making sure that you're doing the most important things to drive that forward as well? I think well. it depends on your, your family situation too. Everyone's situation is different. So some of us have younger kids who have a really tough time understanding when a parent isn't around all the time. And then, you know, it gets the creates the resentment between the two parents because one parent's always stuck with the kids and they want to know, where's daddy? Where's daddy? And, you know, it's, it creates a different type of struggle that you, you still can do it. You know, we did it for a couple of years and the kids were yep. fine. They probably won't even remember that much. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, and then you've got the other struggle of if your kids are older, you can communicate better with them about why you're gone or why you're working so hard, but that doesn't always translate into them being okay with it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to sneak ahead and just mention Tom's book. There was some interesting perspectives in the For Better or For Work book where he had his kids tell him later on in life, 
what they thought about the fact that he had been working all the time and was an entrepreneur. And like one kid's perspective was completely different than the other kids. So it's, it's just going to be based, based on your particular family situation. And sometimes there just are going to be things that happen that you can't control. Wait a second. Did you just sneak ahead and like throw the book out there? Wow. That (laughs) might be a first. Well, it's it's one of the three books you've read, right? It is. Yep. Yep. So I'm allowed to do that. I have to do it three times, three times only. <laughs> well, and I think the other important thing that you said too is thinking about your kids' ages. Um, so while, you know, one of our things was while I was still working a job, I was actually traveling for four days a week. Yep. And it was it was definitely tough at the time. I think it was toughest on you. Yeah, I, I think it was more difficult on me. I mean, me. not that I had a great fun time being stuck at home alone with a three-year-old and an infant, but at least the infant had absolutely no idea what was happening. Well, and the three-year-old was like, oh, daddy brings me home a new, uh, <laughs> daddy like... Daddy brings me a surprise every yeah. time he comes home in his suitcase. <laughs> and Yay. we get to go on the escalator. That's like the <laughs> highlight of my week. I get to go up and down the escalator like 10 times. Yep. And I remember even back Back then, early, we started explaining to her what that meant that, you know, daddy had to go to work and work makes is what makes the money and the money is what pays for the house and your toys and our food. So there are ways to kind of weave that stuff in so that they start to understand what that means Yeah, well, very early on. Well, so now she says, oh, you guys working again? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's almost six, so now she yeah. kind of figured it out. Well, and, and I mean, we've explained stuff to her. You know, she understands that we have, you know, houses that we don't live in, but we rent out to other people, and those people pay us money, and that's how we bring money in, and that's how we buy their chocolate muffins for the morning, right? <laughs> Of course, the but uh, I was gonna say something you brought up that I think is really important is the age of your kids. And in Plan with Purpose, what we talk about is building out a roadmap of kind of the future and what things you want to have happen when. A big hack that we found useful on there is actually putting all of our ages, including the ages yep. of the kids, and then what grades they're going to be in. Yeah, and, and I mean when certain activities start, and that's what we life, started. Yeah, because and- then then we could kind of figure out. Okay, so we're saying at this point in life. Um, you know, our daughter's going to be in third grade, our son's going to be in kindergarten. So as we're planning like experiences, as we're thinking about business growth, how does that all tie in? And does some of it maybe not make sense? And we got to shift it out. Or we say, you know, we could grow this business a lot more. But you know what, there's not a reason to because we've already done what we need to to build that life that we want. And that's where I think a lot of people fall off is that they're not clear on ultimately what they want to achieve. So they just keep trying to make more money or trying to build a bigger business. And sometimes you don't have to build a bigger business, right? Sometimes it might be the business you have, you're just increasing the efficiency. So you make more profit with less. Or or if you're just bored like Tom and you have to start something new all the time, (laughs) You need to look at, okay, well, how can I keep doing what I enjoy and then maybe start investing in some other things that don't take my time away? So Absolutely. Much. Yeah. And so I mean, that you can still be doing new things and meeting new people and having new experiences, but you're not necessarily trading that for time. You're instead trading money for those new experiences. Well, I was going to say, one of the books I, I mentioned in the past was Rich Dad Poor Dad. And I'll actually put this up in the show notes at tomandariana.com slash eight. But it's this um, cash flow quadrant that he talks about. Mm. And if you haven't read the book, basically what he talks about is there's a picture. Because, uh, well, if you're on the video, you're now going to see my <laughs> hands like drawing it in the air. But um, picture like a quadrant and he has um, ESBI. And E is the top left as an employee. And what you're really doing is trading your time for money. And then he has S, which is self-employed. And that's basically what most people do when they leave a job. Yeah. They leave a job, but then they have a job in their own business. So even though they're their own boss, they're still trading time for dollars usually. And then he transitions over to the right-hand side where he talks about like being a business owner. And a business owner is somebody that has a business or a set of systems, but other people are doing parts of that. And you're working on the business, not in it. And then ultimately, he talks about being an investor. And this is where you're taking your money that you've had and you're investing it to help you get more money. So that's an interesting concept that as you go through, most people go through those phases, but you want to get to the point where you're letting your money make you more money and you're building businesses and assets that also make you money. Yeah. That's when you go talk to our friend, Jason Brown, (laughs) start (laughs) investing in some stocks. (laughs) Exactly. So shout out to the Brown report.com. Jason, like I, you guys might've heard that early on I tried stocks, did it work, didn't know what I was doing, but um, I actually spent a couple days with Jason, uh, last year and he was showing me some of the stuff he's doing and what's cool about Jason now that we're talking about him he actually does his trades 
live and he kind of shows you here's where i'm buying in here's what happened here's where i bought out we'll, we'll link to it in the show notes too, we will so I'm, check them out i'm a little excited but yeah that's where you start looking at other investment opportunities right that's where you look at real estate and these things that can make you money without you having to spend as much time yeah all right so we got we, we went on a little bit of a tangent there let's bring <laughs> it back let's talk about some of the ways that we've found that helps us integrate our family life into our our business work and all of that yeah well i think the first one we've talked about before is we have meetings yes like one of our key meetings is this weekly meeting that we we're have. not weirdos all right people this is this is a good thing this is a good thing we have thing. meetings family <laughs> meetings marriage meetings money yeah. meetings well i was gonna say uh, one of the blog posts we did was actually about having your um your budget meeting your yep. money meeting and uh we've talked about like dave ramsey before and that's one of the things he talks about yeah right having that monthly budget meeting you know what's he call it the Oh, shoot. Now I'm not going to be able to think of it. Yeah, that's all right. But um, so we'll link to a blog post where we actually talked a little bit about actually we were in somebody else's yeah, blog else's. on how to have a money date. Right. And how to have those discussions. But for us, we take it beyond just the money. It's we also everything. sit down and look at like, hey, what's going well and what isn't going well. And then a big one for the integration piece is actually our calendars. Yep. Uh, and I say That's calendars. That's my favorite part. Well, I calendars. say calendars because we have like 12 of them. Yeah, I think there's 12 now. It might be 13. <laughs> Um, and no, again, we are not nuts. The reason we have different calendars is because each calendar stands for a different category. So we have a calendar for each of the businesses. Uh, for the online business, we actually have three because Tom and I play different roles in the business. So there's a calendar for each of us separately and then one for the items that we do together. We have calendars for each of the kids. We have calendars for each of us personally for, you know, doctor's appointments or coffee dates or, or whatever hobbies, it happens yeah. to be. Um, and then we have, did I, I think I said them all. Yeah. There might've been one more. Oh, you have like I, a time blocking yeah, calendar. I, I block time out with some of it. I think that's all of them. That may, I don't, that may or may not add up to 12 or 13. I did not count in my head, but what that allows us to do is get really, really clear about what's happening in our lives every single week. So we always put the family stuff on first. So there is a standing date on all of our calendars that says uh, family dinner. So yep. we always have our family dinners on there. We have Friday nights are pizza and movie nights. Uh, with it's the one kids, of my favorite nights. Pizza and game nights. I was going to say, it's been pizza and game night we for the last, last couple of months. The kids are really into game Elena's right now, so. loving Catan. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. I'm so excited. Um, what else is on there? Working out, that goes well, on you, first. Well, you have your choir. I have choir on yep, there. So that's one of your Tuesday, hobbies. That goes on there. Um, yep. So, well, so basically, personally. Yeah, when we take a look at the week, the and actually, um, I'll link up, I'll put a video that we did for our Lifestyle Builders, where we actually decompose how we do this weekly planning with our calendars yep. and so we sit down first and we say like okay what family stuff do we have we put those and block that time out on the calendar then we go through each of us anything that we want to do this week or need to do or anyone we want to meet with put that on and we basically just keep filling in our calendar and once we get past the family stuff then we start saying okay business wise yep. we have multiple businesses so we go one by one and say okay what, what needs to happen this week to keep this business going? And is there anything new that we want to do to grow it or to optimize it? Yep. And then we just layer in all of that until our calendar gets filled. And if stuff can't fit on there, that's then an opportunity for us to say, okay, is this not important or not urgent and it can wait until later? Yep. Or is it something that maybe we shouldn't even be doing and it's an opportunity for us to automate it or outsource it or do something like that? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we have... We actually have our calendar, the tool that we use for our calendar in the online business for people to set up meetings, looks at our calendars first and can only place things in certain times. So it can't ever take like a family times time slot or um, if we have doctor's appointments or if we have meetings during the day between each other. That is first so that those meetings get scheduled around there. Yeah, and, and that's the key. And so the other one that we talked about was my time block. Yep. So one of the things I like to do is when I look at the week, basically say, okay, um, between 8 and 12 this day, I'm going to do this type of activity. And all day Thursday, I'm going to do this type of activity. So the first thing I do is kind of go through and figure those things out. And then to your point, we like I, I do a lot of coaching. Yep. And so I have to have time for calls. So I went through the week and said, okay, these are the days and these are the times when I'm going to do calls. When I'm talking to people or when I'm working with coaching clients, they're going to fill that up. And once that's filled, it's filled. Yeah. You know, so that way I'm not letting somebody else dictate my schedule. I'm saying, what do I want my schedule to look like? And guess what, guys, you're going to fit into it. 
Yeah, exactly. The other the other point I want to mention too is when you're doing the the work life integration piece, one of the important things to do is to get clear on roles and really play to your strengths as well. So when it comes to the calendar, um, even though Tom has everything on there, I am usually the keeper of the calendar and tend to know what's going on. Oh, I have, I have no idea. Yeah, he's usually clueless. <laughs> I take like one look at it and I know everything that's happening for the week. And then I'm like, oh, did you get this for that? And are you you taking the kids to this? Um, so that's one of my strengths is I have like, I have the mind that can remember all of those things and do all of that stuff. Whereas Tom is a little bit more, um, you're like the big picture guy. So you've got that bird's Absolutely. eye view of yep. like, okay, well, what are we doing here? And then we got the business stuff. We got to make sure we work on that. And so it's very important to know that within your own family, what your strengths are and play to that. Yeah. So um, we are very good now with sharing the household tasks. Um, now that we both are working from home, it's just easier for us to be like, okay, let's split the household stuff. You're going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of that. Make sure it's getting done. Um, and then obviously with the kids, we can now each play uh, our own roles and we swap back and forth with taking them to daycare and to school. Uh, what else is there? Well, I, I was going to say, and the other thing with that too is so we lay this calendar out, but then it's not like it's it's set in stone. Correct. Right? So then what we do each day is we have our, our sync up or our check-in, like sync up and drink up. Like, sync up and drink up. It's we, not alcohol. We, we sync up on the day. Well, it depend, depends on the time of day. If it's in the morning, it's usually coffee and chai. If it's in the evening, sometimes there's a little something in that. <laughs> but, I mean, what that allows us to do is then check in and say, okay, let's review for the day. Like, what calls do we have? Um, what? Where's our focus? Uh, is there anything you need help with? Is there anything I need help with? And that way, we might have planned a schedule at the beginning of the week, but maybe something happened on Wednesday that yeah. then changes what we got to do on Thursday. So we can then sync back up and say, okay, this thing changed. We're going to tweak it. What impact does that have? And um, and that comes up a lot for us like with the kids. Oh, yeah. Right? Last week even, yeah. we had a call from a teacher and had to go pick up a sick kid halfway through the day. So we just said, okay, we got half of the podcasts batched that we wanted. Let's, let's shelf the other half and we'll go pick him up and... Whatever we can get done, we'll get done. But are there any top priority tasks, you know, that you need to do um, so that, you know, we'll swap off who's hanging out with the sick kids so that the other the other parent can do their urgent tasks. Yeah. And I mean, we had like this was kind of a surprise for us. But the last couple of years, basically from like Thanksgiving to like February, like our house was like quarantine. So yep. like one or two of us was always sick. Or the kids were sick. Yeah. And that really threw a wrench into us because we had planned all this stuff at the end of the year, like closing out the year, planning the next year. And it was always a challenge, right? But now that we've kind of figured that out and we know that we're flexible and we've got these meetings and checkpoints, it makes it a lot easier to kind of have the ebb and the flow of life. But you still have a plan, you know, yeah. of something that you're going towards and what's important for you. Our plan is really more of a framework and a guideline yeah. than you have to get this done on this exact day. Because let's let's be honest, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Kids get sick at the worst possible times. Or, no, you cannot be sick. Or you get <laughs> sick at the worst possible times. I can't remember how many times I've had like something. This past year, I got sick on my birthday weekend, yeah. and Tom wasn't even and here. I wasn't even here. He was at a conference. Yep. It was the worst possible timing ever, but it happens all the time. So you have to be flexible. You have to get used to adjusting your life and your business and all of the things that you had planned. Well, okay, those aren't going to happen today. Let's look at it. Let's see how we can adjust because a lot of us, that mentality is what really gets you. It's not that you don't actually get the tasks done. It's that it weighs on your mind. Yep. And you can't get over well, it. Well, I was going to say, and that was, that like was a big one for you. Oh Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Everything like, adds everything up. Everything would and... just back up, and you would feel like you had to get everything done. And I know we've had a lot of times where we sit down and say, okay, well. There's no what? possible way to get it all done. Well, and, and what really needs to get done? Yep. Like, you know, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll have another episode where we talk all about risk and how you set your business up so that you can manage through these things. But the reality is... Most of the time, you're going to have some tasks that are critical to get done and then some that are nice. And the reality is if stuff shifts like a day or a week, it's not going to be the end of the world. You may think it is, but it's not. And oftentimes sitting down and going through that, that's when you realize, okay, life happened. Yep. Things shifted a week. 
it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. And especially if you can set your your life and your business up so that everything's not urgent. Like that's when people get into trouble. Like I remember the first when we had the serial startup podcast, mm-hmm. we tried to batch record our show so that we would do a bunch of them. But there was a while where we, we just got so busy that we would try to do like one a week and then it became urgent. And then if we got sick, it threw everything off. Yep. So that's where it's really critical to make sure that you're setting things up so that you can focus on important things, but they're not always urgent all the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, so much. <laughs> I remember <laughs> we would be doing them at like nine o'clock at night because we had to get them recorded so that we could get them, get the episode posted and published on the right day. And- yeah. And, and this is where a lot of people, I know we're going a little bit off topic here, but it ties back in. This is where a lot of people really get that balance or that scale shifted so far because they're like, okay, I've got my, my job, I've got my family or my life or, you know, my friends that I'm, you know, doing stuff with. And then I've got this side business I'm trying to build. And if they don't know the right tasks to work on, or if everything's always urgent, what tends to happen is that they dedicate more and more time to that focusing on, you know, not the right things. And it ends up really cutting into, uh, their their family time and even into their job in some cases, rather than building it up to then enable them to be able to um, really leave their job or be able to spend the the more time with their family and friends because they're just not focused on the right things. Yep. And we find that time and time again with people. Yeah. And you, again, you have to play to your strengths. So if you know your personality well, if you know your work style well, if you know the best ways that you work or the best times of day, um, Tom is a morning person. He likes to get up early and work before the day starts. I am a night bird. Um, I prefer to work in the afternoons and in the evenings. So if you know that about yourself, then you can kind of set your life up around it. Obviously, that's, you can't that's move critical. your job, but maybe you're a morning person. So you get up early before you go to work and do some work in the morning. And then at night, you take your quality time with your spouse or with your kids. And that way, you're you're fitting those those times and those those projects into the best place for them to go based on you not it's a little bit of molding you molding your business around your life or molding yeah. your work around your life well and you talked about you can't move your job but we haven't really talked about this too much there typically is more flexibility these days. Um, Sometimes you can have a flexible schedule. So like I know my first job, I could do nine hour days Mm -hmm. and then um, every other week have a day off because I put in my 80 hours Um, or sometimes, yeah. Or sometimes you can work 10 hour days and do four 10 hour days. Um, Some places you can actually shift your hours forward or backwards. Mm. So if you were a morning person, you could actually shift maybe some of your work back. Um, And then to your point, take advantage of all the times you have. Like a lot of people don't realize that, you know, you might be listening to this in your car, like on the way to work, but yeah, as you're driving, like listen to podcasts or listen to audio books, like to give you the education. Maybe you're doing calls with people Um, during lunch. Maybe you can use your lunch break to, you know, work on some of your side business or get other things done. So a lot of people have these like hidden times that they don't realize they have that could actually help them have more of this integration between their job, their family, and then their business they're trying to start. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and it's all about you. So, I mean, let's, let's be honest. There is no one formula that works for everybody. And when you add on a spouse and you add on kids and you've got your job and you've got your, your business on the side, you really, it's, it's up to you to figure out that formula. And, um, so what, what you're saying around here, my, I love uh, it. <laughs> the, it's a quote given to me by Heather Gray, um, a couple weeks ago, she said, families don't function on formulas. And I was just like, Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> Wait, that's I, the I best can't, quote ever. I can't put them in my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's so true. Everyone tries to you try to fit things into a little box and you try to say, oh, well, it works for that person, so it should work for me. It's not always the case. So it's take a step back, look at your family, look at yourself, look at how everyone in your family works, look at your different personality types that you've got in there and really put some time into thinking about like, okay, well, what if we just shifted this one thing? Would that make things easier for everybody? Maybe it might, you know, if you're a morning person, get up before the kids and do your work. Uh, I know a lot of people have like the morning routine where they get up an hour or two before their kids wake up, Mm -hmm. have their coffee. Did they do some uh, personal development and read a book or 
they get some work put in before everybody wakes up and the house is loud and chaotic. <laughs> um, or there are people like me who just stay up two hours past the kids going to bed and I get my time to myself. I get a little business work in. I have that choice. Well, I was going to say, and the key with that is, you know, you do want to look at what other people are doing, especially successful people or people that are where you want to be. But you don't necessarily want to just copy them. Correct. What you want to do is understand, well, why does that work for them? What are the underlying principles that they're following? Yeah. Like one of them you mentioned, it's like figure out when you're in your flow or when you work best and then mold everything around that. Right. So like we've adjusted things so that typically I get up with the kids because I'm already up either working out or <laughs> reading. reading or doing something. So, you know, generally I'm up with the kids first. That lets you sleep in a little bit more. Because I am not a happy camper in the morning. No, you're not. So... What's your what's your shirt say? Oh, not a morning person. Yeah. Anymore? Like, yeah. What was that? Trolls? It's a, it's a troll shirt. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't it be? I have a troll sweatshirt that says not a morning person. But yeah, I mean, so that's the key It's you know, read the articles, read the books, watch what other people do. But don't just copy them because it worked for them. Understand why it works for them and why they do it that way and then incorporate it back into your life. Yeah. And that's one of the, the best things I think for people is really taking those principles and then making it work for you. All right. So my homework for you today is if you don't already blend that family calendar, sync up, have all make a different color category for everybody in your family, have all of those things laid out. Um, I know some people have like a wall one that they have at home, but now with the internet and technology out there, you can literally carry it around with you in your hand. So we have ours connected. Uh, we use Google Calendar. So ours yep. is literally connected anywhere we've signed it to Google. And uh, it just makes things so much better for us to work around and to figure out, hey, I can sneak an hour in here while I'm at gymnastics with one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So my homework for this week is I actually want you guys to do a time audit. And this is probably one of the first steps that we give to most people that we work with. Mm -hmm. And basically what this is, um, I think we have a worksheet. We'll throw it somewhere. up on the show notes page. It's somewhere. Um, but so basically sit down with a one-week calendar and map out every half hour of your day, where does it go, right? So you can do this either in real time or you can just map out you know, what you think it is and then just confirm. But like, okay, so on average, what time do you wake up? Right. What time do you go to bed? So, you know, block those hours out for sleep. Um, when do you eat? When are you commuting to work? When are you doing your day job? When are you doing your family things? And then color code those. And what you're going to start to find is how much time are you spending where? And then what you can do is say, is where I'm spending my time now in alignment with the goals that I have, the life that I want to live. And if it's not, then you can start making some of those changes so that when you do the, the calendar blending, yeah. you're making sure that you're you're focusing on the right things for you. All right. I like it. What's your, what, well, I guess we already talked to you about your bookshelf today, but explain why it's your bookshelf. I was going to say, I, I almost feel like this should be your bookshelf <laughs> for today. Ariana gets a bookshelf for today. You, I was going to say, you already called the book out and this was one of the books you read. So I'll give my intro and then I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> so the, the book is called For Better or For Work, A Survival Guide for Entrepreneurs and Their Families. And this was pretty cool. And I found this a couple of years ago because I didn't even know they had books like this. Mm -hmm. And um, we often struggle with finding people that talk about having a business and a family. And so when I found this book, I was like, one, the title's cool for better or for work. But two, it was written from the perspective of not the entrepreneur, but the spouse. Yep. And so what was just very interesting, especially at the time that I read it, was the, the woman talking about it was actually going through a lot of these challenges that were the same challenges you were going through that I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. And so it just has, it has a lot of stories, a lot of practical tips and guidance. And um, I know that when I had you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, can I make me read a book? And I'm like, no, trust me, this is a good one for you. <laughs> and, and I believe you actually got a lot out of I it. I did. I enjoyed it. I think it, it, I think it solidified things for me that all the things that I were feeling and the emotions that I had were completely normal. I wasn't alone in feeling those things um, because it felt that way being the spouse who was always saying no and always the one that wasn't supporting the ideas made me feel like the bad guy all the time when it it what I wasn't being the bad guy. I was being myself. I was having legitimate concerns over 
what are we thinking here? What's the plan? I was having some fears that I had to get over. So when I read the book, it it made me feel like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. These are these are concerns that other spouse entrepreneur spouses have had as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, I loved that they went back to their children when they were older yeah, that was, and got that was their perspective. Cool. I mean, like their kids were like in their 20s and 30s, I think, and asked them and, and talked about, you know, hey, how were you feeling when this happened? And how were you, what emotions did you have? And it was just really eye opening for me to see all those different perspectives. And they actually, there's quite a few different stories throughout the book of when she went and talked to other entrepreneur couples or spouses of entrepreneurs so it gives you absolutely it's not just hers it's also other people's stories kind of what's the word i'm looking for sprinkled Sprinkled throughout the story yep well and actually as you mentioned that one of the things we talked about and you guys will likely see in the future we're actually going to bring our daughter who Mm -hmm. is turning six this weekend onto the podcast and we're going to kind of interview her and talk about, you know, what is it like, you know, um, what do mommy and daddy do? Like, how do they make money? How is it when we have to work and get a little bit of her perspective? Mm -hmm. And then it'll be really cool, like years down the road to go back and listen and see like, okay, where was she thinking? How did that grow over time? Um, So we're going to do a little bit of that ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. She's yeah. excited. When are we going to do your I know. Show? She's been asking about it like every day. She thought day. it was going to be like the next day. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> to, in the schedule, of course. Yeah, we got to put it in the calendar, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, what did we do? Oh, we talked about our, our not really homework, but if you want to learn more about some ways to integrate your life and to do the calendar and to prioritize your work, um, definitely take a look at our free Plan Your Purpose uh, video course because we talk about a lot of this stuff in there and it breaks it all down into an easy to understand way. Yeah, absolutely. So you can get that on the show notes page at tomandariana.com slash eight. All right. My lucky number. <laughs> uh, it's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And as always, I want you guys to remember that it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye. Are you frustrated by a lack of momentum in your business? Do you want real-time guidance and support from seasoned entrepreneurs who really care about your results? If you're nodding your head or awkwardly shouting yes in public somewhere, then we invite you to join Lifestyle Builders, a mentorship program designed to meet you where you are and give you strategic and custom guidance so you can build the business you need for the life you crave. You can find out more at joinlifestylebuilders.com. Your life, your business, your way. We join family entrepreneur life. We join family entrepreneur.